Mr. Stockman, what do you think about proteins? Proteins are cool. They've got some cool in them. Huh. I think that joke will be really funny in just a few minutes. Cool. Cool. Proteins have coo. That's going to be a good joke later. That's good. That's going to be a really good joke. You that's... soon listen, you'll be you'll be laughing. You'll be in stitches in a few minutes. Trust that's, us. That's comedy gold. That is. That's gold. gold. Here's your protein video. Welcome. I'm Mr. Balsiger. I'm Mr. Stockman. And this is about protein structure. structure. Structure means like the shape. The shape of protein. Here's your questions. Question one. Please answer these while you're watching the video and we'll check them out during class. Yeah, make sure you label the top of this entry nice like protein structure questions. So maybe it's like Roman numeral four. Or whatever. Protein video questions and make a nice obvious fancy title so that we know what we're looking at when we check them out. Number one, name and describe the protein monomer. If you watched the carbohydrate video that word should look familiar. If you haven't then go back and learn what a monomer is. If you don't know what a monomer is will you go watch the carbohydrate video? Number two, draw and label an example of one protein monomer. Doesn't have to be real fancy, but uh, I think after this PowerPoint, you'll get a feel for what amino a ooh, what monomers <laughs> that make up proteins are. I almost gave away the quick answer there. This is my favorite thing, my favorite way to describe how protein structure drives their function. For number three, I want you to hang a weight from a rubber band and twist it. It might be a water bottle or whatever you can find that has a little bit of weight. Continue twisting and twisting and twisting and twisting and twisting until the rubber band begins acting funny. You will be able to describe the analogy of this rubber band to protein structure. And by protein structure, we're talking about primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. And we'll show you what those four different types of protein structure are. So in your journals, you're going to, number one, describe the protein monomer. Number two, draw and label an example of a protein monomer. Number three, you're actually going to try to do this. Hang a rubber band, twist it, and make an analogy to protein structure. Here we go. All right, let's get started. What are proteins made of? Well, there's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sometimes sulfur. Let's try to uh, use the two second wait time. Mr. Stockman, are these atoms or molecules? Atoms. Correct. An atom is the single subunits that make up a molecule. So these are the atoms that make up the molecule of a protein. Where, that also is referencing the first video. Where carbohydrate had cho, proteins have chons. 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 The um, monomer of protein is called amino acid. I almost gave that away on the last slide. Yeah. Here's some more facts. How many different amino acids are there? 20. So like uh, if you're trying to write out some words, when we use the alphabet to write out our words, there's 26 letters to make words that we'd write out. Well, for proteins, there's 20 amino acids, and they spell out a protein. Nice analogy. The, the language of your cells is essentially the proteins that govern all these chemical reactions, and there's 20 different amino acids, 20 different letters to write your cells language for instructions. I mm. like that. Mm. Thanks. Huge! Oh, sorry. Might, that might have been too loud. Might have been yeah, too loud. They, they, I like the enthusiasm. That, that is huge. Huge. Proteins are huge. Huge. Way bigger than the others that we've studied. Proteins are polymers, meaning they're made up of monomers, and those monomers and proteins are amino acids. Do you remember poly means many and mono means one? Proteins are polymers made up of amino acids, which are the monomers. Let's take a look at them. Amino acids are basically made up of three parts. You got a thing called the amino group. You got the thing called the carboxylic, carboxylic acid. acid group. Oh, that's cool. cool. That's why amino acids are so cool. cool. And then the last is, well, the R group. It's sort of like this miscellaneous chunk hanging off the side. And it may contain a carbon ring or may not. It may also contain oxygen, nitrogen, or sulfur. So here's an example on the side. 
On the left, you've got the amino group. Here's our amino group. So the nitrogen with two hydrogens. All amino acids have that. And then on the right is the carboxylic acid group. Oh, that's cool. And then on the bottom, you've got that R group. That could be a whole bunch of different miscellaneous things. But in the center, you've got the alpha carbon. like the, Alpha carbon. Like the alpha wolf. Or the alpha male. Yeah. Or the alpha family member, usually the mom. Is that is that gender bias? That is gender bias. Oh, sorry. And then the side chain is the thing that changes. The amino acid is essentially made up of these three things around the alpha carbon, All right. the coolest carbon of the molecule. So we got some examples here. I can't find my cursor. Oh, oh but God. we do have some examples here, like, <laughs> like serine and leucine. Now let's look at how they are similar. Which carbon is this, Mr. Stockman? Alpha carbon. Alpha is so cool. And the amino group? So these, these two groups are in every amino acid. Let's and it at, all has an alpha carbon. Let's look at the leucine at the same okay. time. And then we can kind of compare them. There we go. We got our amino. Our alpha. Oh, alpha. There's the alpha. The amino group. And the carboxylic acid group. Carboxylic acid group. Coo. Coo. Oh, that's coo. Now what's different is the R group hanging off the bottom. That's the stuff down at the bottom. R group is down here. Clearly, that one looks different than that one. So the 20 different flavors or the 20 different letters of your cell's alphabet is made up by changing the R group. Yeah. Let's take a look at another couple examples. Amino group of tyrosine. The Q group of tyrosine, the alpha carbon. And then this is the thing that changes. That's going to be our R group. Alpha carbon. Amino. Oops, sorry. Amino. Oh. Coo. Coo. And then the R group on the bottom. If you can look at the uh, types of elements here, like the question says on the, on the left, we've got um, for tyrosine, we've got hydrogen. We've got. Oh. oh. Uh oh. Bad we form. We've got for tyrosine, we've got um, hydrogen and nitrogen and. Carbon. Um, oh, oxygen. So I see hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, oxygen. That's four different elements for tyrosine. Four different types. Let's That's take it methionine. Methionine. Well, I got some hydrogen. Got hydrogen. Oxygen. Oxygen. Carbon. Carbon. Oh. That's and we have a nitrogen. Nitrogen. So we got nitrogen. Yeah, that's that's four. Oh, and there's a sulfur. Oh, down here. That's so that's five. yep. I got five on that one. So uh, essentially, we get five elements possible in an amino acid. So there's the essential amino acids, meaning that um, there are eight of the twenty amino acids that your body can not make itself, and twelve that your body can. The remaining 12 amino acids can be synthesized by the body cells. So that means, Mr. Bosker, how do you get those eight amino acids there on that list inside your body? Well, my three-year-old has made up a term for this. She calls it hompy chomp. So my answer would be, I have to put these in my mouth and hompy chomp them, Dad. Gotcha. You have to eat all eight of these. You can't make them. You have to rely on who? Um, your diet? Your food source. Your another food source. another organism on the planet had to construct these. You you're required to have these. You can't function without them. You have to eat them. Somebody else makes them for you. Oh, protein structure. This is where we get to the primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. This is where you're gonna go into the other room, go grab a rubber band, hang a weight off of it, and start twisting it. The hang the rubber band when hanging with the weight just straight is primary. The secondary, which means two, is when the rubber band begins to twist with the weight on it. It gets that kind of basic uh, little ropey knottiness to it. If you twist it even farther, the rubber band begins to double up on itself. And that would represent the third or the tertiary group. Quaternary would be if you did this with a, a red and a blue rubber band and you put them together. Let's take a look at a few pictures. I got some pictures. Ooh, just like you drew. Primary, exactly. I think, I think your pictures are actually better. Primary means one. Secondary is a twisted up. 
Tertiary is when it begins doubling up on itself. Jumbled together. Quaternary is when you have multiple proteins working together in a big wad shaped of an enzyme thing. Yeah, nice. So some people say that protein structure or the shape of a protein is much more complex than carbohydrates and lipids. I like to say shape instead of structure because that makes more sense in my head. But so the shape, thus the shape of proteins is much more complex because it gets twisted up and wadded up. We're going to build some molecular models in class. And that's when we'll practice looking at these different types of shapes. So for now, you should be able to answer, name and describe the protein monomer. Draw and label an example of a protein, of one protein monomer. Go do the rubber band thing. Hang it, twist it, relate it to primary, which means one, secondary, which means two, tertiary, which means three, quaternary, which means four. It has these four levels of complexity. Nice. See you in class. Bye-bye.